Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of him through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, we're going to read Psalms, and please read it responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. 
I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Oh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> right. So Matthew presents us with one of the most dramatic readings of the resurrection story. There was this great earthquake and an angel of the Lord descended, his appearance like lightning. In other words... Light has split a crack in the universe, and everything we thought we knew has changed. To meet Jesus is for the ground to move beneath you. Nothing remains as it was. So now it was early morning. The women encounter grief and joy as the darkness of the tomb gives way to light as dazzling as snow and lightning. The places that we knew were empty of hope are now filled with divine presence, and the world as a whole has been remade new. We go to the garden looking only to be near our lost beloved, and we find ourselves embraced by love itself. Gardens are an interesting metaphor for our Easter story. I continue to share ideas from a wonderful spiritual author, Joyce Rupp. She talks about gardens. 
And if you know about gardening, you know that it can be hard work. Part of it involves preparing the soil for planting. After a long, hard winter, the ground can be packed solid from heavy snows or pelting, drenching rains. The soil can be difficult to turn over. It resists the hoe or the garden tiller, and it may take many hours of tiring work before the soil is soft and porous. But this part of gardening is essential, though, if green shoots are to be able to push their way through the soil. A garden that has a hard-packed surface will not be able to receive the life-giving moisture of the spring rains. The water will run off and fail to soak the soil. Earth that is turned over is essential for a garden's watering. And the human spirit is much like a spring garden. If growth is to happen, it too must be ready. The human spirit must be opened up if God's goodness is to grow there. Open minds and hearts are ready to receive the abundant life God constantly offers. Resurrection life. In Matthew, the two Marys respond to that in at least three ways. Fear, joy, and obedience. Fear is precisely how a good biblical character responds to angels and other divine manifestations. And fear is also how we respond when we're confronted with a new truth that will change our lives. And in this sense, fear and joy are not strangers. For example, we experience both of them when we draw close to a friend, when we fall in love, when a baby is on the way, when sickness and death draw near? Why shouldn't fear and joy accompany us when we're called to live into God's good news? So let's look more deeply into those moments when joy and fear hold hands. Sometimes we're afraid that if we open ourselves to a new idea or person or a different approach to a situation, we may get hurt or look foolish or appear incompetent. Nothing prevents personal transformation more than a closed mind or heart. Change can't take place if we cling to and clutch at what we think is unchangeable. When our security is at stake, we may withdraw or fight instead of listening, instead of thinking, praying, and talking about the challenge that's before us. We tend to defend our positions and our feelings, and then we find others to help us defend them instead of letting go, receiving new information, listening to different perspectives that call for a change in us or in others. And resistance leads to negative thoughts and feelings. We can easily criticize and find fault rather than give praise and affirmation. Unopened people are often filled with worries and are on edge with life. They feel angry, prevailed upon, and misunderstood. Open people, on the other hand, are usually filled with wonder and surprise. They're not afraid to hear new things and to meet people who carry beliefs and values that are different from their own. They're not threatened by diversity and plurality or by questions that differ from theirs or that seem to have no answer. They see life as a joy and are constantly amazed at the wonders and beauties with which God graces their days. New thoughts and ideas enter their life and strengthen them on their journey toward wholeness. So they are truly like gardens whose waters never run dry. But, well, hey, most of us are closed at one time or another. We all seek safety in certain areas of our lives. It's a natural human response. In our desire for security, we sometimes fight the call to grow and to change. It takes trust to open up and to be, re to be receptive to the Easter moments. In our personal experiences of resurrection, of Easter moments, there's the element of surrender and vulnerability. We're required to let go of our own agenda. But, you know, we'd like to plan the watering and refreshing of our souls ourselves. Just as surely as we find the date for Easter on the calendar, we want to know when our hearts will be filled with joy again. But we're called to be open 
expectant, and ready, believing with all our hearts that new growth will come. God is with us, providing for us, watering our inner gardens. We won't be washed away, nor will we be left dry forever. As we enter into the resurrection story, let us hear God coaxing us to be open, like the way a welcome rainfall coaxes green out of a thirsty, dry garden. Easter is about openness, about God coaxing growth from the turned-over soil of our spirits. God waters the gardens of our hearts, and remarkably, the combined experience of fear and joy propels the two Marys to run and tell the other disciples. On the way, on the way, they encounter the risen Jesus, who commands them to do precisely what they were already about to do. Fear, on its own, provides poor motivation for obedience, but joy, properly guided, makes us run to tell the story. So fear and joy, despair and hope, doubt and faith, these are the two sides of our lives in this world. But in the end, we've heard the resurrection promise that joy, hope, and faith will ultimately prevail. But are we open and ready to receive the seeds of grace? Will the green shoot of divine life spring up in our inner garden? Just as Jesus promised his disciples would see him when their minds were ready to see the truth of the resurrection, so we are under the same promise. Christ is risen, and he is here for all of us to meet every day. And even now, angels accompany us in the darkness. Faith remains possible. Understanding will come. The voice of the risen Jesus calls us by name, and the God who destroyed death is ever able to turn our tears into joy. All is not lost, because remember, we have seen the Lord. We go to the garden and find ourselves embraced by love itself. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Standing as you are able, let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today, our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. So let us pray to the Lord, saying, Risen Christ, to you we give under undying praise.
Heavenly King, for us, you endured the cross and the grave. When we were yet sinners, you redeemed and saved us. May we sing your eternal praises everywhere we go. Risen Christ, to you we give undying praise. Incarnate love, where hearts are wintry, grieving, or in pain, call forth new life by your touch. Bring forth life in the barren places of your world, especially for those who are sick and suffering, and those listed who are near to our hearts, and those we now name silently or aloud. Risen Christ, to you we give undying praise. Author of life, you are the ruler of creation. All things created on earth sing to your glory. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Stacy Heston, Alfred Terry Jr., Robert Barrett Baird Sr., and Jody Baxter, and for those celebrating anniversaries this week, Meg and Dev Devereaux, Robert and Serena Baynard Jane Jr., from the death of winter, raise the fair beauty of earth. Risen Christ, to you we give undying praise. Resurrected one, bring our neighbors from sadness into joy. Where, the, where they live in darkness, brighten their lives with a day of splendor and give to them that peace that passes human knowledge. Risen Christ, to you we give undying praise. Triumphant Lord, gladden the faces of all who are sad and fearful hearted. May they rejoice in your victory over sin and pain, even as they share in your glorious triumph. Risen Christ, to you we give undying praise. Protector of us all, grant your peace to all who protect and serve, as well as their families, the police, the firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and those serving in the military, especially those listed who are near to our hearts and those we name silently or aloud. Risen Christ, to you we give undying praise. Risen Christ, you have opened heaven's gates. You have freed us from the power of sin and death. Through your resurrection, you give us the promise of resurrection to a holier state. Bless the dying and the dead, especially William and Lois Battinger, and Rufus and and Stella Badinger, for whom the altar flowers are given. Risen Christ, to you, to you we give undying praise. Hear our prayers on behalf of those for whom we pray, and give us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning. Happy Easter. It's wonderful to have all these faces in the pews. <laughs> I know. Not really. <laughs> so we we will have um, we will have a coffee hour after the service. There are some uh, cake bunnies back there. There's all kinds of, of good food. So join us after the service and continue your conversation. Um, are there announcements before I go on? Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Wow. That's pretty good for Episcopalians. <laughs> My name is Dan Hinkle, and we are in the process of putting together a weekday Bible study. And we have very good turnout so far. And um, however, we're still having, uh, we're still trying to figure out what's the best day and time. So there's, we're going to not start this study until May. So we'll get, give ourselves a couple more weeks for you all to sign up. There is a sign-up sheet on the clipboard on the kneeler to the back of the church. You can see it right there. If you want to look back, he's holding it up. Joe's holding it up. So uh, before you leave today, put your name and email and or... Uh, phone number down for contact information, and I'll be in touch with you and survey folks uh, to try to find a common time for us to meet. So again, we're not going to do this until the month of May, so you have a couple weeks more to sign up. And you can also, or you can also call in or email the church office and let us know that you're interested uh, in this. So, we'll start in May. There's lots of opportunity for you to sign up. I promise it will be interesting, surprising, and inspiring. Thank you. Are there other announcements? Okay. This uh, Thursday, our healing service continues via Zoom at noon. And on Saturday, April 22nd, looking for some help to uh, kind of spruce up our outside. We need to put mulch down, do some weeding, put some mulch down, pick up trash. And April 22nd is actually Earth Day. So sounds like a good day for us to get together and do a little cleanup. So starting at 10 a.m. and hope to be out of here by noon, maybe earlier if we have enough volunteers. So Saturday, you're all looking at me like, Somebody help me. <laughs> All right. Um, and today, I am happy to announce that it will be Trinity's premiere of an anthem that was composed by our former organist and, and choir director, Gail Craven. It's entitled, He is Risen, Alleluia. So the choir will be doing Gail's commissioned anthem for us. First time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
This Easter Eucharist is dedicated to all for whom the Easter flowers are given. Frank Armstead, the Bacchius and Devereaux families, Freda Bradford, Kenneth Bush, the friends and family of Nora Bush, Peter Bush, the loved ones of Alan, Ebby Carey, Louise and Richard Cobb, Donald and Harriet Eastburn, Beatrix, Carolyn and Kenneth Eccles, Marie and Ward Evans, Robert Fleck, the loved ones of Greg and Cassie Foreman, the parents of Ann and Ken Furlong, the loved ones of Clifford Gardner, William Franklin and Marion Gordon, George and Lois Hinkle, Dominique Artis Jennings, Virginia S. Keating, the loved ones of Joe and Pat Kirkner, Joseph and Myrtle Kirkner, Mamie and Fred Korn, Dick Kutz, Hartini E. Lawrence, Charles Lewis, David Pierce, Agus Prihandako, Catherine Robbins, Mr. and Mrs. Victor J. Shanley Jr., the Sullivan Brown family, the parents of Kathy and Bill Terry, Elizabeth Warnick, and Evelyn Weyrich. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. And we thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. 
Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with blessed Cyril, our patron saint, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The wisdom of God 
the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.